Hello, my dwarven comrades. It's about time I made a guide for what is probably the most popular class in Deep Rock Galactic. That's right, I'm talking the Scout. If you're new to my Greenbeard to Greybeard class guides, the way we do things around here is I'm first going to go through my build and what I like to run, then hop into three missions where I will give live commentary talking about uh, what's going through my head at any given moment and how I approach different situations uh, in an effort to make you guys better at each specific class. So let's go ahead and get into the builds for Scout that I like to run. We're going to go one build at a time, then run a mission with that build, and then we will move on to the next one. Now this is by far my favorite loadout for the Scout, and that is running the AI Stability Engine GK2. What this is going to do is it's going to make it so your GK2 has absolutely no recoil whatsoever. So it is just a laser rifle, essentially. Um, I have rate of fire, increased damage, high magazine capacity, weak spot bonus, and then rate of fire once again. So this build specializes in taking out high priority enemies uh, at a distance, up close, it doesn't matter. With the no recoil, you kind of are the designated person to take out, say, Mac Terra from across the map. Um, anything with the easily ex or with a very exposed weak, po weak point that is easy to hit, uh, that is your job to take out with this gun. Moving on, I have the Jerry Rig Boomstick with Special Powder as my secondary on this class, just because it's so much fun. Uh, you can't deny how much fun it is to fly around the caves with Special Powder. Um, special Powder makes it obviously so if you are in the air, you can blast your Boomstick in any direction and you will go in the opposite direction. You will go flying in the op opposite direction. Um, which is fun. You've probably seen your scouts flying around the caves uh, with this overclock in the past. Um, but not only that, this shotgun does a lot of damage, and with blow-through rounds, that's the most important thing that I recommend you take. Blow-through rounds in the fourth tier here um, allows you to take out hordes, which is something that your main primary weapon cannot do very well. So you're going to want blow-through rounds, and then you can group up enemies using your mobility and then pop them with the shotgun. You'll see in-game, and I will talk you through it. Um, other than that, the build here is 22211, and this is just what I find most useful for this special powder build. As for the flare gun here, I just like the double duration in that higher magazine capacity simply because uh, rate of fire is essentially useless. Um, and I just like the long duration flares because having to shoot them all the time is a pain. Uh, for the grappling hook, I like to have greater reach. Nothing is worse than when you're falling and trying to catch yourself with your grappling gun and it's just out of range. So um, same reason uh, for the same reason I choose projectile speed so that I can again catch myself if I'm falling and need a quick escape. Uh, and then recharge speed just so I can zip around the caves a little bit more frequently. Now, Voltaic Stun Sweeper is a bit controversial, I feel. A lot of people think that it's terrible. I'm not one of those people. I love the Voltaic Stun Sweeper. I think it's fantastic. There are some niche situations where um, Cryo Grenade or IFG are like hands down better. But I mean, use what you have fun using. Pheromones is good as well. Use what you enjoy. Um, I like the Voltaic Stun Sweeper because it's kind of a set it and forget it type of uh, grenade in my opinion um, and then here we go for our perks passive perks from running deep pockets thorns and resupplier and then field medic and iron will as my active perks now that we're in game let's talk about what should be any scout players number one priority keeping the caves lit you see this little part of the subtitle yeah that's your job darkness is a part of drg's gameplay but the eye strain that comes with it doesn't have to be Thanks to this video's sponsor, Avenir. The screens that we are always in front of are pumping out immense amounts of blue light that is the source of major headaches, eye strain, and poor sleep quality. Avenir's Ascender blue light glasses are the perfect solution to this problem that we all face as gamers. I've been using blue light glasses for years, and I've found that for dark games like DRG, Terraria, and Minecraft, or games with bright flashing lights like Risk of Rain 2, eye protection is a total game changer. I used to only be able to play games for about an hour or two at a time before eye strain and headaches started to set in. With blue light protection, these issues are eradicated quicker than a pack of grunts that just got introduced to the fat boy. How does that one taste, Glyphids? I bet that it's not as good as the passion fruit flavored offline gummies offered by Avenir. These gummies will help you transition from gaming to sleeping and allow you to not only fall asleep quicker, 
but get better quality sleep so that you feel more rejuvenated when you wake up for another hard day's work in the caves. Click the first link in the description of this video to get a huge 25% discount on any purchase from Avenir. This is only available for the next 48 hours, so make sure you check them out today. And thanks again to Avenir for sponsoring this video. When playing as the scout, there are a couple of things that I think are generally your priority list to keep in mind. Uh, the first and foremost is 100% keeping the caves lit. You need to be able to see. It's such a pain when you can't, you and your teammates are not able to look around the cave without, with just your dinky little flares that you throw by hitting F. Yeah, make sure you're using your flare gun anytime it gets a like even a little bit dark to help prevent your teammates from having to strain their eyes or anything of that nature. Uh, I mean, it also helps to plan your path and avoid threats and all that. There's just infinite reasons to keep the caves lit. Maybe we're not gonna die um, secondarily, yes, you're the scout. You need to be the one that's looking for high, high up, hard to reach minerals, secondary resources, things of that nature. Um, specifically Nitra, especially right when you drop into the mission, you need to be looking for Nitra so that in case some sort of emergency happens where you guys need a, uh, a resupply pod that you can access one of them. I'm gonna check this little nook up here because, yeah, it was dark and I didn't think I, I had scanned it before. So I, if you see any, like, tucked away corners like that that you think it's just going to be hard for anybody else but a scout to get up to, then go check it out, you know? You never know what could be up there. Could be a random event, could be a helmet, you never know. So go up there, check it out, costs you nothing. You can even do a little boomstick jump up and fly over to places that you want to check out. On Drill Dozer missions, this is a Cave Leech cluster, so we got to be extra careful about... Uh, shooting our flares anytime we breach into a new cave but that's that's where i was going with that is on drill dozer missions you should be oh god thought i heard a leech Oof. drill dozer missions specifically you should be very cautious when the drill dozer uh is breaching into a new room uh because as soon as you do you're going to want to shoot a flare you never know if there's leeches on the ceiling or something like that so uh first thing that should happen as soon as doretta pops her head into a new cave is you pull out your flare gun and shoot one. We'll see that here. I'll even check my terrain scanner to see an estimated amount of time I have until that happens. Especially on a cave leech cluster mission like this. That is uh, extremely important. Okay. Looks like we're breaching a new cave here. Get some flares up. Hmm, this lobby is open to the public, but uh, still waiting for some people to join. It sounds like we have a helmet somewhere. Using the boomstick to break your fall uh, is a fantastic reason why the Jerry Rig boomstick with special powder is like the most noob friendly way to learn how to play scout, I think. Uh, just because, you know, a lot of times you mess up your grapple when you're learning and then uh, with the boomstick you can catch yourself, not need, uh, not need jet boots or anything like that to break your fall. All you need is to whip out your secondary, and you're good. Okay, got a swarm coming. First things first, we get cave lit up so that we can see the threats coming at us. Get up close and personal with my boomstick just to spread out my ammo usage a little bit instead of using my GK2 only. Sitting at a very weird angle here, letting bugs get underneath it. We got meteors coming. All right, hopefully Doretta doesn't get hit too hard by that. Oof. I frequently refer to this build as my aim labs build because of uh because of the weak point bonus damage. It really just uh it feels like I'm flicking between the little balls when I'm playing aim labs. So. Very aim-heavy build. May not do quite as well on console, um, but I'm sure it's still viable. More meteors. Alright. One little trick you can do as scout is throw something up in the air, zipline up, and then release the zipline and catch whatever you threw mid-air. Uh, when you're in a solo mission and don't have anywhere to, uh, any gunners or anything to get you a zip line to a higher area or a driller to drill you a tunnel, uh, sometimes that's your only option for getting a heavy object up a cliff or something like that. 
So it takes some practice to get to get used to, but uh, that is a generally useful tool to have or a tip to tip to have in your arsenal. I think a lot of people when they're playing Scout fall into the trap of thinking that they are just a bot that is meant to mine resources uh, and that they don't do very much damage. And this couldn't be further from the truth, uh, especially with the build that I'm running currently. You can do so, so much damage over the course of a, a map and uh, really kind of carry your team just by taking out the high threat enemies uh, with like tri jaws, spitballers, ma uh, menaces, things of that nature. You can do way more work for your team than they'll even realize and, and even appreciate you for. So don't don't fall into the trap of thinking that you're only only there to mine resources. Oh. All right, I'm going to prioritize Doretic here since she's getting a little low. Stun Sweeper should buy me enough room to get a nice repair off. All right. And we'll get over here. Both Rock Crackers are down. That's not great. But thankfully, we are Scout. And we can fix that in a jiffy. Alright, on Drill Dozer missions, make sure you go back a little bit in the cave if you didn't mine out everything uh, in the previous cave, because usually each time you start up Doretta, she'll go through two caves and stop in the second one. Uh, so make sure you go back to the one that you just kind of breezed through and were fighting enemies through to mine out all the Nitra, because you'll need it on the final Amaran fight if you, uh, if you leave it behind, so... Ideally, if you can, you'll just kind of grab it as you're passing through, but that's a little harder to do on solo, because you're trying to correct protect Doretta at the same time. Look at this. There's a beautiful horde, and I just get to whip out this shotgun and blast through all of them. If it gets a little sketchy, I can just jump and shoot down uh, and make make double use, getting myself out of danger and killing the danger. So, One thing that's important when you're getting resources as the scout is if you fill up, don't call Molly to you because you're calling it away from your teammates who aren't as mobile as you. Um, this is really annoying when scouts say, if I'm up here mining this, and I call Molly all the way up here, my three teammates can no longer deposit when they're mining things down on the ground uh, because they can't get up here. And I can very easily just mine this vein, and instead of calling... Oh, well, it's a bad example, but Molly should ideally stay down there, and instead of doing... Instead of her coming all the way up, I can just zip down and then go back up to continue mining if I need to. It is a little bit less convenient for you, but it is so much more convenient for your teammates. See if I can uh, demonstrate how quickly I can get back to Doretta with this boomstick. There you go. Just like that. Alright. Can't forget it's a cave leech cluster mission. So let's see. Are we about to breach another cave? Looks like we already have. Let's try to mine some things as we're going. Okay, yeah. Breaching a new cave. Careful of leeches. Careful of leeches. Saying it out loud so that I don't forget. Leech, leech, leech. Alright, another new cave again. Flare up immediately. Check for leeches. I'm sure there are some in here. I just can't see them yet. Oh, that's scary. So a lot of baddies in here. Just trying to take that out first, because I have good weak point damage and it's got a really easy weak point to hit. Stun Sweeper. Try to lower the damage output onto Doretta at the moment. Pick up the Acid Spitter because he's high threat. Stun these guys. And we should be good. Looks like Bosco is going to help us clean up the rest of these. Just a couple of barrel stuff shots to the back of these guys should do it. Alright, so surprisingly, no leeches in this cave, uh, but it looks like we do have plenty of nitra. I'm sending Bosco for that one. Uh, I guess I should talk about one of the more important strategies to know as the scout. Uh, for one, landing on top of resource nodes, uh, which that one doesn't look like it's going to allow me to. Uh, which is a prime time to talk about the other thing you should know as scout, and that is power attacking yourself into the wall. 
you go like uh, kind of like that. <laughs> Pretty much, you just zip line in a in an upward arc. You want to let go of your zip line a little bit before you reach the wall. Aim kind of straight ahead of you and a little bit down in power attack, and then you should land yourself in the wall. I like to let go of my movement keys when I do this. Um, so that once I'm in the wall, my guy doesn't do... Oh, that's dangerous. My guy doesn't do any, like, kind of moving around and knock himself off the wall. Um, that just takes practice, though. I don't have much more to say about it than that. So, this is scary. I'm gonna try to take out this bulk before it gets anywhere near Doretta. Um, stun sweepers will help with that. They stun them for a brief amount of time. Uh, and by brief, I mean a lot. So, stun sweepers do fantastic at keeping bulks away. And we're safe. Very nice. And then heading back a little bit in this cave because, once again, I gotta clear out this previous room that we came through on Doretta. Uh, and also, I know that the helmet that we scanned is right up here. Very nice. I wasn't intending to do this entire mission solo, but it looks like that's gonna be, uh, gonna be how it goes, which is fine. I don't need quite all of this Nitra, but it can't hurt. Extra XP, right? Uh, and then let's grab this last bit up here, and I'll try to demonstrate the power attack method once again. There you are. So I believe all that's left now is the Hearthstone fight. So let's get going, get a couple more resupplies down just for safety. Uh, lights up. This fight becomes so much easier, just like everything else in this game, if you make sure you always have the lights on. Using my blow-through rounds here. As the uh, showback decides to blow through me. Oh, it's going to do it again. I have no choice but to repair for a second here. And yeah, that's, that's punishing. Okay. Bosco, no! Almost saved me in time to fix Doretta there. Um, but that will be alright, hopefully. Alright, we're on to Rock Phase. The GK2 does very well on Rock Phase, so long as you can keep enough distance that uh, you can get a couple reloads off. Dealing with the bugs on top of dealing with the rocks, not quite as easy. Uh, but that's what makes this, doing this on solo, uh, a challenge, I guess. Try to use our good, uh, good weak point damage to pick off these guys at a distance. Yep, that's a stun sweeper type of moment right there. These showbacks are causing me a problem. Don't have a great way of dealing with them. Just get myself out of that situation for a second. Oh, could have let me get that, you know. Get in here and repair for a little bit. That's not good. Uh, since we don't have any helpers here, I'm going to have to zip around to take these things out as best I can. Uh, which is very unfortunate. I can give it one of those, a little power attack whenever it comes up, and then zip back to the dozer for a repair. That's a bunch of bad guys. Alright, barring any disasters, we should be alright here. I'm just going to get some ammo and rely heavily on my stun sweepers here to uh, protect the dozer while I handle this guy. It's just working out pretty well. Time's winding down on this fight, and we are in the clear. Whew, thank God that's over. That was... Uh, a little bit sketchy. 
Uh, as you can see, this build is kind of better suited for multiplayer and having co-op, but uh, that's kind of true for every build, I feel like, um, especially for Scout. Um, just, just a character that kind of suffers a little bit when playing alone. The next build that I'm going to showcase here is going to be an M1000 hipster build. And you're, we're going to spec that into a 13113. That gives us some extra ammo, armor breaking, damage, blow through rounds, and then a quicker reload. Our goal with this hipster build is going to be spamming uncharged shots and trying to utilize our blow through rounds much like we were using uh, the blow through rounds on our jerry rig boomstick on the last build. Uh, except this is going to be our primary weapon and it's going to be doing a lot more damage. So our goal is going to be to line bugs up and utilize our extra damage and blow through rounds to chew down hordes as best we can as the scout. For a secondary, we're going to be running the Zukovs with Cryo Mindlets. If you don't know what Cryo Mindlets do, if you shoot the ground, the bullets leave behind a little ice mine that will do a little bit of freezing uh, temperature to enemies that walk over them. Uh, and with enough of them, and as you know, the Zukovs shoot very quickly, you can freeze enemies pretty quickly. So to utilize that, we're going to be running 1-1-2-1-2. One, one, two, one, two. Uh, that gives us some more ammo because we're not really worried about damage on this build. We're just trying to freeze enemies with these Zukovs so that we can take them out with our primary. Higher magazine size, get more mindlets out. Uh, accuracy, so we can place them more accurately. Uh, that seems pretty intuitive, and it is. Uh, blow through rounds so that you can shoot them through the enemies and hit the ground because the mindlets don't work if you shoot them into an enemy. So you want blow through rounds for sure. Uh, and then get in and get out because we don't really have a need for uh, conductive bullets. Everything else in my build will be the same as my previous scout build, except for my grenade, which I've switched up to be a cryo grenade to complement our Zukov's freezing ability. Alright, so we're going to drop into a nice and short Morkite mission with this build. Uh, hopefully we get some teammates this time, because uh, there doesn't seem to be all that many players online at the moment. But no matter what, we will go ahead and run this, and hopefully we don't have to do the whole thing solo. So without the jerry ring boob stick, I've already forgot I don't have it. I need to be a lot more careful uh, with my zipline gun. And this is kind of a better showcase then of how scouts should typically play if they're not leaning on that crutch of the boom stick with, uh, with special powder to break their fall damage all the time. Uh, I just need to be a little bit more conscious of where I'm aiming my zipline, time it so I jump off and land perfectly without taking fall damage on lots of things. Um, th these are things that really just come to you as you get used to playing scout over time. If I have to give a recommendation, I would just say try to be confident with your movement, but not overconfident. Um, you know, I know that I can land up here nice and easy. Just zip line up and do it. Don't don't need to be like trying to aim directly at the mushroom. Try to aim a little bit higher. Uh, that way I give myself a little bit of space to cushion my landing and, and maneuver myself so that I land where I want to. That's just a good general tip uh, for Scout overall is to aim higher than you want to be. Uh, that way you can maneuver yourself as you fall instead of, you know, not being high enough. It's a lot easier to be too high and land where you need to be than be too low and fall to your death. Hope that Hopefully that doesn't sound too rambly. Woo, we've got a teammate. Oh, never mind. So here I'm just trying to funnel all the bugs into a single file line and take them all out with my hipster here. Uh, you can't see very well because, you know, just fungus fog things, but... And here I'll try to showcase the cryo mindlets a little bit. How quickly they can freeze an enemy. Beautiful. Alright, and that guy is joining back, so we will get a teammate. And he's a green beard. Look at that. Power attack ourselves into the wall, uh, which is certainly more risky without our jerry rig boomstick to save us if we mess up the, the power attack, but we're all right. I'm very confident in my abilities to do it, so no big worry. See, here our goal in this swarm is just going to be mostly kiting with our, our zip line to maneuver around making sure all the bugs group up so we can utilize the aoe from our both our mindlets and the blow through rounds on our uh, m1000 oh that guy just got destroyed so kiting around let me get some lights up and then i will spray a nice line of mines 
utilize the get in get out mechanic of these Zukovs to uh, zip around without needing the zip line. I do need that though. A little refresher on the health. And man, this room isn't perfect for kiting, but uh, it will have to make. All right, we'll have to work. Especially with these meteors. There we go. Hey, we got two of these. Nice. Rare to see two from mini meteors. I'm gonna use our mindlets to freeze this thing. Make sure we can take it out uh, without spawning the little guys. That's super nice. That's how you handle a surprise swarm coming at you. Just a quick burst of mindlets followed by a spray down with the M1000. Took them all out perfectly. No! 90 degree leech be like... Alright, well we finally have a teammate which is uh, awesome. And we also have a mushroom, which is even awesomer. Uh, having a teammate makes this build even stronger because, you know, we're not the only one trying to shoot the frozen targets. Or I'm not the only one trying to shoot the frozen target. Uh, so it just makes my, my Zukov build a lot better. Um, so hopefully I can do that to the oppressor and we'll just destroy him because of it. And fix this guy up real quick. Whoa, what was that reload bug? You see that? Um, well, now we have Scout's best friend, the Engineer, on our team who can shoot platforms for us, so we don't have to rely on power attacking into the wall every single time there's a high-up mineral vein. Um, very, very nice. Uh, it is something that you should 100% learn, though, if you're trying to get into playing Scout, because it's necessary, and you're not always going to have an Engineer, and sometimes you may even have an Engineer that just isn't very consistent about shooting platforms for the minerals. So definitely a good habit to get into is, uh, yeah, being able to be self-sufficient on scout and get to things without needing the help of your teammates. Interesting. What did the NG do this for? That's, that is odd. I don't know how the NG figured that out, but, uh, more power to him. And, uh, well, that's the mission. All right, we got some people coming in to leech some XP. I respect it. I respect it. You know, get your XP when you can. <laughs> the nod. Alright, so staying consistent with how I like to do this type of video, we're going to go through the last weapon that Scout has uh, in their primary arsenal and their secondary arsenal, uh, and that is the Drac 25 Plasma Carbine here, um, which I have a build for that utilizes the shat Shield Battery Booster Unstable Overclock here. And what this essentially does is it makes it so as long as you are at full shield, uh, you're going to have an increase to fire rate and damage and pretty much every bit of this weapon's stats get increased so long as you're at full shields. Um, but overheating will completely destroy your shield. Um, so I kind of like to consider it a heat management build. You, you have to be very cautious to not overheat uh, when you're running it. But I kind of like that little game inside of a game aspect of this build. Uh, anyways, for the modifications, I am running 22122. Um, it's going to give us less heat generated per shot, kind of gives us a little bit more of a buffer uh, when we are trying to manage our heat. Um, some increased damage, some increased accuracy, explosions causing enemies to explode, or the bullets to explode in a small radius. This just helps when taking out swarmers. I find it really useful. Uh, and then the increased fire rate when the weapon's over 50% heat, because not only is this like an audio and visual cue that you're getting close to overheating, um, but it is just a damage increase if you need a little bit of a burst of damage right before you overheat or before you have to stop firing. Uh, anyways, you have to be really cautious because it's not just that overheating uh, really hurts you by breaking your shield, but taking any damage from little guys or whatever 
uh, really hurts the damage of this build. So it kind of is a perfectionist build where you need to play very, very well. And I will try to utilize it uh, to its fullest potential in the game. On top of that, we're going to be running the Bolt Shark X80 with Trifork Volley. Here is my favorite loadout for the Bolt Shark, even though I have, I have to admit, I haven't given uh, the Bolt Shark the love that it deserves, and I haven't really tried out all of the different overclocks and modifications for it. So this is what I found, and uh, hope please be f feel free to tell me in the comments uh, that you have a build that's 20 times better. Anyways, I'm running Electricity as my Special Bolt, Increased Total Ammo, Reload Speed, Movement Speed, and then we have magnetic shafts, which just makes it so there is an electric field around our electricity bolts that we shoot. And then lastly, the only other change with this build is pheromone canisters, which I like to run um, just to group enemies up away from me so I can get better use out of my two primary and or my primary and secondary weapon, um, specifically the electricity bolts here on the bolt shark. Uh, I will let you guys know in game what I mean more about that. All right, so right before I get into game, I'm going to say this out loud to remind myself and you guys that I'm going to be trying to play as perfectly as possible because of the need for my shields to be full uh, in order for this Drac build to excel. Um, that means I need to be really cautious with my zipline gun about taking uh, unnecessary fall damage and things like that. Um, and we get started and we're immediately looking at some chaos here. And I'm being very cautious to manage my heat uh, so that I don't absolutely uh, destroy my shields immediately. All right, just tap firing to burst down some of these enemies without losing any shields getting out of here. Um, but it seems like it's about time that I can finally exit the drop pod. Ah, uh, and see, I've overheated. There goes all of my shields. That is how this build works, so... You can see that this thing ha does suffer from a pretty significant decrease in damage uh, when it when I'm not at full shields. Um, here I finally have some teammates, so you can see me uh, zipping back to Molly instead of calling Molly up to me on on walls and things like that, so that uh, my teammates have easy access to her as well. Especially on a mission like this, where our objective is a large carryable object like eggs. Uh, it's just nice to have Molly in a central location. Alright, my main goal at the moment is getting enough Nitra for a resupply, which it looks like I already have. But, um, yeah, enough for two then. This guy's getting that. Uh, is ideal because that was a hot drop and caused me to burn an, a ton of my ammo. This, this build is not super ammo efficient, so uh, making sure I have lots of Nitra on hand is going to be key uh, throughout throughout this mission. Sure, I get it nice and lit up for this swarm coming. Septic spreader can come down. My boy just got leeched. Go save him. He's a fast typer. Pop that guy with my tri-fork. And I'm going to get up here to take out this acid or septic spreader because he is just camping the top and shooting down on my teammates who cannot really do anything about it. So that's my job. I'm just keeping myself distance from the battle to try to keep my shields at full as I overheat. Um, which is, you know, classy. Oh, we have a bitter gem and an error cube on this mission. That's... We're gaming. <laughs> now that that's over... Oh, 
Whoa, that was craziness. Um, one thing about this build with uh, needing full shields is you kind of have to be very cautious of team damage because even if it's only a very minimal amount of team damage, uh, you know, it will knock off the ability for you to have max damage, unfortunately. So there's a ton of web spitters and things just crawling on the ceiling and that generally is something that scouts are, are good at dealing with because they're already looking at the ceiling to shoot uh, their flares pretty frequently. Um, and with a lot of different builds for Scout, uh, they just have good long-range options, like the Bolt Shark uh, in this case. Even though the Trifork isn't necessarily great for the Bolt Shark long-range. Um, the Electricity Bolts and things like that are just good ways to pick things down uh, from the ceiling. Try to break some armor off with that. And then I'm going to try to get a nice Trifork pop on to kill this guy. It's a pretty good combo there with uh, with this particular build for Scout. Uh, you're going to want to use your Drac to break the armor off of tanky enemies like that and then get one good tri, tri park shot will uh, generally do the trick for taking out medium-sized enemies especially. We'll throw our pheromone grenade on the bulk. Make sure uh, we get any help we can from, uh, from the bugs to take this guy out. But look how much damage this tri park does. I'm scared for our guy's life, so, uh, eh, he seems fine. Well, I'll be rezzing him. JK, he's a gamer. Respectable. Try to cool down here a little bit, and we're going to try to do that same exact strategy on this guy where we pop his armor off and then try fork him to take him down. Uh, didn't go quite as smoothly that time, but that's okay. Uh, this is the build that I'm least experienced with out of the three that I've showcased today. Um, and it probably shows in the gameplay and my lack of tips for this. Uh, but that is okay. I think it's really just about the gist of playing as a scout and knowing your tasks and things like that. Uh, what you can and cannot do. Uh, yeah, like that. Getting your timings right. Um... That's kind of the point of this video. It's not so much supposed to be build specific, but uh, trying my best to let you guys know what I'm thinking as I'm playing. Nice 15k mission in 18 minutes. We uh, will take those. Anyways, that is going to conclude my Greenbeard to Greybeard guide on the Scout class. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. Uh, if you think that I missed anything hugely important or have any build critiques or build suggestions to share, please feel free to let me know in the comments. Uh, let me hit these gamers with a rock and stone, and I'll hit my viewers with one as well. Rock and stone. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.